And joining us now is Senator Mark Udall. Welcome to 7 News. Good to have you Mark, here in Denver. Great to be here with you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on. Th thanks very much. Let's look back to one year ago when the government was shut down. I know you pride yourself on someone who reaches over to the other side of the aisle. I know you are very particular about seating arrangements, wanting to make sure that you sit with members of the opposing party. But at the end of the day, the government did shut down, and I think it is viewed as a colossal failure of government. Why should you get an invite back to Washington? The government shutdown was driven by the very forces that don't want uh, Washington to uh, lift our economy and, and uh, make sure that we're responding uh, to the opportunities that we have as Americans. This is a real difference between Congressman Gardner and myself. While I was in Washington working every way I could to get the government open so that we could respond to the flood events that were here, Congressman Gardner and the Tea Party element in the House was intent on shutting down the government. And the reason, they wanted to vote again on repealing the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act was not perfect when it was uh, implemented, but we're going to make it work in Colorado. We have 400,000 Coloradans who now have quality health insurance that they didn't have a year ago. We're going to make sure people can keep their policies if they like their policies. And Congressman Gardner threw in with the crowd that just wanted to shut down the government uh, to make a statement. In Colorado, we don't shut down. We stand up for our state. And we will talk to, to, uh, to Congressman Gardner in, in the days ahead, hopefully, and question him about his record. But still, do you feel that you bear some responsibility? Because even though you may have done individual actions, collectively, as a group, there was failure. What I bring to, to Washington is a, is a Colorado mindset. We are rugged collaborators here. At the same time the government was shutting down, I was pouring my heart and soul into finding the resources so that we rec could recover from the floods, as you remember. And so my focus was on keeping the government open. I knew that if we didn't, we would delay the recovery. Our national parks, for example, in Colorado shut down. That hurt our economy. It really set us back. So I, don't, I, I do not take any responsibility for the government shutdown. In fact, I was working every hour to keep the government open. Looking at the past year, are there any votes that you wish you had done differently? No, I, I stand by my voting record. Uh, what I would do when I'm in Washington, D.C. is take a Colorado compass to Washington. And when, uh, for example, the president uh, is taking us on the right path, I'm going to st support that president, like I did President Bush and now President Obama. If the president is, is uh, performing in a way that I think isn't in Colorado's interest, I'm going to stand up and make the case. I've done so when it's come to the spying that the NSA has done on, on Americans. I've, I've stood up for the veterans when the Veterans Administration wasn't providing surgeries in Grand Junction. Uh, for our veterans, and we needed uh, firefighting assets to fight fires, and the, and the federal government was slow to act. I was saying to the Forest Service and this administration, get us those air tankers. We need them to fight these fires. Real briefly, I do want to talk about the Affordable Care Act. Yes. Despite the best and noble of efforts, there are still small businesses today who feel, despite the best of intentions, the economic burden and strain on them is, is tremendous. What do you say to a small business owner who, to this day, is still struggling uh, because of these new circumstances? Yeah. What I say to the small business owners, I want to work with you. We're going to define what a full-time employee is. We're going to define what that full-time employee's hours are going to be on a weekly basis. I also am going to say to that business owner, look, I think there may be an argument that the requirement that biz businesses provide health, health insurance doesn't maybe need to be, we could set it aside because the individual requirement is working in some, some really important ways. Look at Colorado. Our, Premium increases are going to be less than 2% this year. We've now insured 400 plus thousands uh, Coloradans who didn't have quality health insurance uh, a year ago. So my focus is on making the law work and expanding coverage. Uh, my opponent's emphasis has been on let's repeal it, but he has no replacement. If we were to repeal it, we would put people back at the mercy of insurance companies, which is what the situation was before the Affordable Care Act passed. In an effort to cover as much as possible, I want to move to foreign sure. policy. Let's talk about, about the war on terrorism. I think you will agree it is a constant threat facing, facing this nation. Do you think the president's response to the ISIS forces moving in on different cities uh, across the Middle East was appropriate in the sense that do you think that this timeline has been adequate or do you think that forces should have perhaps moved in even sooner? I serve on the Intelligence Committee and I serve on the Armed Services Committee. I'm, I'm briefed on an ongoing basis about events around the world. I was in Washington on 9-11. There's nothing more important uh, than to defend this nation. I take that responsibility very seriously. I was calling uh, over a year ago for us to take action in Syria uh, based on what I was hearing from our military and intelligence uh, leadership. The strategy we do have in place right now is a strategy that has broad support. Uh, we're going to call on the Arab countries to do more. We're going to train the Syrian moderates to stand up to al-Assad, and we're going to use our air power. In sum, what we need, Mark, is a smart and tough strategy. 
Uh, we will eliminate ISIS. Uh, it is a brutal and sophisticated uh, and organized effort, but we always prevail. And the way we prevail is we have put a strategy in place that we get behind, and then we remember that politics ought to end at the water's edge. In the remaining minute we have, I do, yes. want, I, I do want to ask you one other question related to this. Although unpopular, do you think that ground forces can be ruled out? Because as we have seen, these ISIS militants have been moving aggressively towards major city centers. It's time for the Arab countries to stand up uh, and provide ground troops. It's time for the Iraqi government to be more inclusive. After all, ISIS took root in Iraq because the al-Maliki government shut out the Sunni populations. Uh, so I am not supportive of ground troops being inserted uh, from America into the Middle East at this point in time. If we get to that point, then we ought to have a full discussion in the Congress. The Congress's obligation, responsibility under the Constitution is to declare war. Putting ground troops in the Middle East would be that kind of an act. In the remaining one minute we have, we want to give you a chance to talk to the voters directly. Sure. It has been the greatest privilege of my life to serve this uh, wonderful state of Colorado. We've been challenged these last number of years by floods and fires and droughts and the terrible shooting at Aurora, but we've been up to the challenge and I've been proud to be a part of the leadership team that's brought seven hundred and fifty million dollars into this state to recover from floods and been proud to be a part of the effort to ensure that we fight fires in the quickest and the most sustainable and efficient way. Uh, I've been proud to lead the effort to ensure that our wind energy industry is well supported and those great American jobs that produce American grown energy are, are still in place. You know, elections are about contrast, and there's a clear contrast uh, in, in this election. There's a choice between Congressman Gardner and me. Congressman Gardner talks about the new generation, but the new generation believes in marriage equality, and the new generation believes in climate change. The new generation believes in pay equity. The new generation believes that women's reproductive rights are sacred. Congressman Gardner doesn't believe in any of those principles. Uh, the new generation uh, is with us, and I ask humbly for your vote on November 4th because working together we can move Colorado forward. Senator Mark Udall, thanks very thanks, much. Mark. Thanks for having me. Nice on. to see you. Thank you.